Hi, I'm family physician Dr. Craig Wax and welcome to Health is Number One. Our installment today is about infectious disease. Now we all get infectious diseases from time to time, be it viruses like colds or influenza or something potentially more serious like bacterial pneumonia, bacterial sinusitis, or a bacterial skin infection. There are lots of different kinds of all of these. And sometimes fungus is responsible for some superficial infections, or if you're immunocompromised, that is to say your immune system doesn't work properly for whatever the reason, you can get internal fungal infections, which can be very dangerous also. Having said that, there's some important things you need to know for basic prevention of illnesses. Everybody knows that they're supposed to wash their hands after using the bathroom, but it's also important to wash your hands after changing where you are. That is, when you come into the house from outside, it's a good idea to wash your hands. When you come to your meals, just like your grandmother used to insist, it's a good idea to wash your hands. And always wash with soap. It doesn't need to be antibacterial soap, uh, as that may not be helpful. It is the grinding motion uh, the water and the soap that actually makes the difference, not necessarily the antibacterial agent that's in there, as it's rather weak and it only kills the minor bacteria anyway, which we've been saying here since 2000. Having said that, um, hand washing is very important because the most bacterial part of your entire body is these guys, the hands. So that's important. We also, as humans, like to shake hands a lot. Now, that's a good thing and a bad thing. It's good for our psyches and it's good for our relationships, but it's bad for infectious disease. Recent studies are showing us that it's a good way to transfer bacteria from one person to another, if you think about it, to shake hands. Okay, so how do we get around that? How do we maintain contact with each other and maintain the human experience without it? Well, I'm advocating here and now for fist bumping. That is this. And that transfers a minimal amount, if any, bacteria at all. But it does manage to maintain contact, both mental and physical contact with the person. So I'm advocating here and now for fist bumps. High fives aren't bad either. However, fist bumps have less contact area and they're in contact for a lesser time than both shaking hands and high fives. So I'm advocating for fist bumps in order to maintain our human experience and not transfer a disease. Another thing that uh, we can do besides washing hands, besides not shaking hands but using fist bumps or some alternative means of of contact that's not directly hand to hand would be not being with people who are obviously ill. If you have a play date or a, a contact a party to go to and you're feeling sick, you have a fever of 101 or greater, you're sneezing, you're coughing or something that can't be accounted for by allergic means or other irritative means, stay home and don't go. Don't share your diseases with everybody. Uh, it's only considerate, it's only kind, and it's the right thing to do. So again, wash your hands frequently and don't bite your nails. Biting your nails is auto-injection of any bacteria that are under those fingernails. So don't bite your nails. Wash hands frequently. Don't be with people that are sick. And when you want to greet somebody, you can fist bump. Again, this is Dr. Craig Wax talking about infectious disease principles and prevention of illness right here on Health is Number One. Thank you.